it's a bell sound. No, what is that? It's someone's eye, his iPhone going off. If everybody could turn off their uh, their sound, please. Okay. Looks like we've got everybody's sound turned off. Okay. Um, is everybody in through the, from the waiting room, Ms. Elric? Yes, Mary can. Okay. Okay, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the regular council meeting for Tuesday, March 30th. It's currently seven o'clock. I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, approval of the agenda, the recommendation would read. That the agenda be approved as circulated. Get someone to move that. Moved, seconded, any discussion? See none, all those in favor? Carried unanimously. I just wanted to uh, further up just say that um, uh, Ms. Halliwell is on vacation. That's why we have Ms. Elric stepping in, our corporate secretary. So welcome and thank you. Uh, public input. Public is permitted to provide comments to council on any item shown on this meeting agenda. A two minute time limit applies to speakers. I will open it up then if there's anybody wanting, if you could please raise your hand or take your volume off and say, that, please mention your name and, and that if you want to mention anything at the public input, it is for items directly related to tonight's agenda. Is there anybody wanting to say anything tonight? Ms. Elric, did you get any written uh, written applications? No, I don't have public any. Public input? Okay. Okay, I will uh, ask one more time. Any more public input? Okay, see none, then we'll move on to delegations. We don't have any delegations. I'll then go on to the adoption of the minutes. The minutes of the regular council meeting held on March 16th, 2021. The recommendation would read? That the minutes of the regular council meeting held on March 16th, 2021 be adopted as circulated. Can I get someone to move those? Moved, seconded, any discussion? See none, all those in favor? Opposed, carried unanimously. Uh, do we have any business arising from those minutes? No? Okay, uh, we have a consent agenda. Any council member wishes to remove any item from the, from the consent agenda? No, okay, the recommendation would read then that the consent agenda be adopted. Someone to move that. Moved, seconded, any discussion? See none, all those in favor? Opposed, carried unanimously. Move on to uh, legislative reports, 9A, and more solid waste management amendment bylaw. Uh, Ms. Elric. Thank you. So this was before council at the last regular council meeting. So the recommendation this evening is that council adopt and more solid waste management amendment bylaw 639-2021. Could someone to move that? Moved, seconded. Any discussion? See none, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. We'll go on to 9B, Water Rates and Regulations Amendment Bylaw. Ms. Elric. Again, this is before council at the last regular meeting and the recommendation is that council adopt and more water regulation, water rates and regulations amendment bylaw 640-2021. Something to move though, moved, seconded, open up for discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. Uh, we'll now move on to 9C, the Anmore Green Estates and School District 43 Local Area Service Parcel Tax Establishment Bylaws. Ms. Elric. Thank you. So again, this is a bylaw that was before council at the last regular meeting. The recommendation this evening would be that council adopt and more green estates, local area service parcel tax establishment bylaw 644-2021 and the council adopt and more green estates and school district 43 local area service parcel tax establishment bylaw 645-2021. Get someone to move that. Move seconded, open up for discussion. See none, all those in favor? Opposed, carried unanimously. We'll now move on to 9D, the parcel tax roll review panel meeting. Ms. Elric. Thank you. So now that the parcel tax bylaws have been adopted for the Anmore Green Estates and School District 43 local area service um, parcel tax, council needs to set the review panel meeting uh, in order to review the tax um, the tax rule for those parcel taxes. So the recommendation this evening would be that council set the 2021 parcel tax review panel meeting for April 20th, 2021 at 7 p.m. 
to be held virtually via Zoom and that council direct staff to provide notice to the affected property owners. Good, can I get someone to move that recommendation? Moved, seconded, any further discussion? See none, all those in favor? Opposed, carried unanimously. Uh, we'll now move on to uh, 11A new business, UBCM 2021 fire start economic recovery regional application, Northeast sector, Ms. Elric. Thank you. So the village recently became aware of a UBCM uh, fire smart grant that is available to communities. Um, uh, it's under the economic recovery uh, grant stream. And while the village was looking into applying for this grant, we were approached by the city of Coquitlam fire chief uh, recommending that Coquitlam, Port Coquitlam and Coquitlam and more Belcara um, send in a joint application. And what the application um, would allow um, us to do regionally um, is to hire a fire smart coordinator for a one year position. And that fire smart coordinator would work amongst all of the communities on outreach and interagency coordination for fire smart activities. Additionally, uh, we would hope to be, um, if the grant was successful, procuring a local fire smart representative. And under uh, the grant stream, some of the activities that we would like to conduct as a region would be to do residential home and critical infrastructure assessments. And there is also funding under this stream for seniors and other vulnerable populations that we could also apply the funding um, to mitigate any of those issues that were identified through the um, assessments. And then further to um, provide funding to support some education initiatives and programs and you know, just establish more of a regional approach to Fire Smart. Uh, the city of Port Moody last year received a Fire Smart um, funding that they have not yet been able to spend that money on due to COVID. So that's the reason that they weren't included in this particular application because they do have uh, existing grant funds to still spend. Uh, in terms of the um, grant, we are applying for $500,000, which is the maximum that would be allowed through community um, as a joint application. Uh, if a community were to apply for this opportunity individually, it would be $150,000 each community. Uh, the city of Coquitlam uh, and Port Coquitlam would uh, administer all of the staffing requirements, um, all of the activities, and we would just benefit from uh, this partnership with them. So it is a great opportunity. And I will add that uh, Chief Sharp has been involved in the application process and um, also um, the activities identified among the um, municipalities for this grant and is supportive of this application. So I do have this evening a recommendation that council support the UBCM 2021 Fire Smart Economic Recovery Regional Application Northeast Sector including Village of Anmore, Belcara, City of Coquitlam and City of Port Coquitlam, and that council support the City of Coquitlam as the primary applicant to receive, apply for, and manage grant funding on behalf of the Village of Anmore should the application be successful. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Good, well, let's see, uh, let's try and move the recommendation. Does someone move it? Second it? Any discussion? Councilor Weberick. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Um, would they go as far as looking at our building bylaws, uh, things like that? Would they look at the community as a whole, like uh, ways in and out? I know one of the things we were concerned about uh, when Port Moody killed the road, uh, the idea of a road to Birchland Park was that was another way out of Anmore in the case of a, a big fire. So how far would they actually go for the, for the money they'd be getting? Through the chair? Yeah, so, th so thank you through the chair. The um, Fire, the fire smart coordinator position, which would be a one year position, could perhaps look at some of those more um, policy driven uh, type initiatives. Um, again, it would be community, you know, regionally based. So that would certainly be something that that they may be able to give us some advice or input on. Um, and should we be successful, then that that's something I can definitely bring up to the group as as uh, an interest of Anmore's. 
Yeah, because I like the idea that it's a tri-cities approach because, you know, forest fires don't uh, respect municipal boundaries. And, you know, I think we've got a real potential tinderbox given that uh, some of the summers we've had up here. So I definitely am very supportive of this. Good. Well, thank you. I'll, I'll now move it on to uh, Councillor Trowbridge. Thank you. Um, Karen, with, um, with Coquitlam managing everything, is there an anticipated distribution of funds in terms of the um, in, ter in terms of the effort put into the communities by this individual, or is it purely a generic process and we all benefit from the information sort of by being adjacent to Coquitlam? Thank you. So, so through the chair, a little bit of both. So each community has uh, identified uh, how many homes <coughs> that we have that are of, that are you know of risk of wildfire. Um, of course, Coquitlam and Port Coquitlam has many more homes, but they do have a pretty equal amount that are um, wildfire wildfire interface. So in terms of the number of homes for the assessments and things like that, it probably will be close to the same. Um, and then in terms of the resourcing, um, the idea is that it's gonna be more of a cooperative effort on how can we all uh, resource. I will add that the, um, Coquitlam will also be engaging with um, Coquitlam First Nation as well um, to see how they could benefit from this. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Cryer. And if you could turn on your Sorry mic. about that. Uh, quick question. So Port Moody had applied for this earlier. Have it, they haven't done anything with it. Are they able to roll themselves into the work that we'll be doing or the city of Coquitlam will be doing on all of our behalf or will they still be excluded from what we have? You know? Through the chair. Through the chair, so um, the city of Port Moody was, um, the grant that they applied for last year was under a different stream. So the activities may be slightly different. There may be an opportunity uh, should Port Moody uh, decide that they're going to go ahead with using their grant money at the same time to align some of those things because of, of course the communities would certainly, certainly benefit from that and we can definitely look into that. Thank you. Good. Councilor Trowbridge. Sorry, just one more question. I'm, um, do, we, do we know do we know how much Port Moody was able to get in this grant and do we know why we didn't apply for the same grant that they did a year ago? Through the chair. So every year, um, FireSmart uh, type grants come up usually uh, every year or every other year. We did look at um, the grant opportunities last year and the particular uh, grant opportunity that existed last year would have been quite intensive in terms of the commitment from a staff level uh, to administer. It was more, uh, this, this one is more well suited in terms of being able to have the staff hired and um, the experts um, than the one that was up last year. We just didn't feel that we would be able to um, complete and continue the activities to the level that we would be able to with this opportunity and being able to hire these experts and, and then grow on from that. Do, we, do you recall uh, off the top of your head what the value of the grant was? I'm, I'm not too sure if I was to, I think that it may, the grants may have been in the range of $25,000 if I'm to remember correctly. It, it wasn't the wasn't large it. amount that we're seeing now. This is also intended as a, um, as a stimulus for, uh, you know, job creation as well. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Okay, perfect. Good. I see no further questions. Uh, I'll call the question then. All those in favor? Opposed, Karen Unassi. Thank you, Ms. Ulrich. Thank you. Uh, we'll now move on to the uh, 11B, the Housing Needs Report Award of Contract, report dated March 25th, 2021 from Ms. Halliwell, which is attached. So I'm going to pass this on again to Ms. Ulrich. 
Oh, your mic, Miss Elric, you're, you're mu muted. Sorry, sorry about that. This was before council back in October um, of last year um, regarding the mandated requirements that have been um, put forward through the ministry to submit a housing needs assessment by April, 2022. So the village applied for at that time and did receive um, successful grant funding of $15,000 towards this activity. So the recommendation this evening would be that council authorize the direct award of the consulting contract for the housing needs report to RWPAS LTD for an amount not to exceed $15,000. Can I get someone to move that? Moved, seconded, open up for discussion. Councillor Weberick. What's the dollar amount uh, before we have to go out for tender or go out for bid? Uh, I'm sorry, I do not know the answer to that. I can I check on that for you. I think it's right around that threshold. Yeah, I thought it was around 15,000. Yeah. I mean, I have no problem. We, we know these consultants are probably gonna be the best and the cheapest anyway, but I just wanna make sure we're following the rules. Yep, perfect. Councillor Laidler. Uh, Ms. Elric, what are they going to do for this money? This, I mean, through the chair. He's in Vancouver, in Amor. Yeah, so through the chair, this is a, a requirement that this housing needs assessment be done. So it will um, entail statistics such as current and projected plus populations, household in income, um, currently available and anticipating housing starts. And it needs to be done starting 2022 by each municipality every five years. So this will be the first, um, the first one for all the municipalities that are, that are happening in the 2022. Good, any other questions, comments? Oh, Councillor Weber. Would have trouble moving this forward unless I knew that amount. I, I just want to make sure we're not uh, doing anything untoward. <laughs> well, there, there's absolutely. I can I, I can quickly look that up if you if you like. And also, um, Miss Halliwell did did bring forward this report, so I'm quite confident that she would have yeah, just, checked that. Yeah, I just you know I just don't want to get us into a pickle. <laughs> of course. I think I think that I thought, seem to remember the threshold was around fifteen thousand. I don't know if it's gone up or gone down, but I, I just would recommend that maybe we table that until we have that information. I, I'm pretty confident that Miss Halliwell would have made sure that this was within the uh, meeting all the criteria of putting it out for a for a, a tender. So okay. I'm I'm certainly wanting to move this forward at this point, and that um, uh, Councillor Trowbridge. I think I think to that point, and I, and I see both points, but I think to that point, it's this is a mandated activity for all municipalities. So um, we we have to do it. As I understood that, is that correct, Karen? Yes, that is correct. Yes. Yeah, so so I I would I would be pretty certain that it would fall within the appropriate category if it's a mandated action for all municipalities. So. That would give me more comfort, but I, you know, Councillor Wavering's point is is very valid. But I, I think we're safe to go on this one. Good. Okay. Any other comments? I'm going to call the question. And all those in favor? Opposed? Carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Miss Elric. We'll now move on to 11C112 Deerview Rezoning, a report dated March 25th from Mr. Boyd, Manager of Development Services. Mr. Boyd. Hey, Mr. Mayor. Um, so we brought this report forward based on uh, a council meeting that was held back in January and then forwarded to APC regarding uh, floor area ratio for 112 Deerview. Uh, the condensed version is, is that in order to change an FAR and increase it above what it is already within the zoning, it would take some a public hearing and a full on rezoning requirement. And after staff have reviewed the file and done a bit of a deeper dive, we realized this perhaps isn't the right way of going about this rezoning for one particular property. So 
the report, you know, has recommended that we don't move it forward towards uh, rezoning. And, and just to follow up with, with Mr. Boyd, I know there was a lot of conversation going on with, uh, with our building and that as well. And it was really related to the fact that this is a strata and what the legal compli com 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 complications would, would come with that. So, um, and we're just basically receiving this report. So I'm gonna put someone to move receipt. Move, seconded. Any discussion, further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, carried Nancy. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Boyd. Um, I'll go on to the mayor's report. So, Mr. Boyd, I do have a question in there under my report that I will ask you at some point. So it's going to be a softball question, so don't, <laughs> don't get too stressed out. But um, I just wanted to uh, remind everybody about the upcoming discussions in open houses regarding the possibility of changing our RGS classifications. It's important for everybody to get informed, get to know the facts. Uh, it's really important to understand the process, what we're doing, why we're doing it, and why we're doing it at this point in time. Um, I will also, I don't want to take any thunder from Ms. Cryer, but I will say that Easter is going to be coming up to us. So that will all I'll say, because I'm sure she'll have more to add to that. Um, I'd really like to put a big thank you to those members of the Garden Club and others who helped out this past weekend at the Spirit Park cleanup and planting of the new trees and taking out some of the evasive plants. Um, you know, uh, Public Works have planted some uh, deciduous trees uh, along the uh, Ravenswood Drive there, which are gonna really bring a lot of color and, and really add to that area, as well as the Garden Club has, uh, has uh, a plan in regards to uh, replanting some, uh, or moving and replanting some rhododendrons um, that are located somewhere within the village that have outgrown their existing premise and we're going to be moving them. So a uh, bunch of work, but I really wanted to thank them. Uh, they were out there working diligently hard in the past. I think Councillor Weberlink and I have always been out there in the past getting the, getting the Spirit Park ready for Easter, but under these COVID times, there will be no Easter events in the park. So um, that, that notice didn't go out or, or I'm sure we would have been out there. Um, I just want to let you know the pathways have now been seeded. They look great, even just like a painted green. I can hardly wait until it grows in. Um, I noticed that there have been already some tire marks on them that people have driven on there. So I'm hoping that that can be fixed or whatever. Um, and the other thing I wanted to just ask Mr. Boyd is, where's the uh, covered bus stops? When are they arriving? Believe it or not, tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> It's going to be a great day because a lot of people are looking forward to those and I'm hoping that we can get more of them and that and that people, you know, really, in, really enjoy. Sorry. Sorry, I misspoke. I thought it was Wednesday in my joy. It's actually Thursday. They're going Thursday. Okay. And then there'll be subsequent lighting will be put into the one of them and the other one will be run off of a solar panel. Right. And that, yeah. Perfect. Um, the village website will continue to post Fraser Health immunization updates. There was an update. Uh, just previous to tonight's council meeting where the AstraZeneca vaccine has been now opened up to people 55 to 65. There's a Pharmacare number you can reach out, but things are happening very quickly in this front. So please stay tuned. We'll try and do everything we can to make sure that we're getting the latest information out in a timely manner. Um, and I also wanted to say a big, you know, there's no better time right now that we all need to stay safe stick within our bubbles. And also we need to get out and support our local restaurants. They're going through an incredibly tough time right now. And if you can do anything and, and place an order um, for takeout and do it in a safe manner, they, they need our help. There's a lot of jobs there. There's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of fam friends and family that live in our community. They're in the restaurant business that we need to do all we can to support them through these troubling times. And we do see a light at the end of the, end of, at the, end of the tunnel. And I think that we just need to get through this next little, Little, uh, little sort of time frame in regards to making sure that we, we all stay safe and stay within our bubbles and, and, and supporting as much as we can the local economy. So that's all I have for my mayor's report. So everybody stay safe. Um, I'll now move it on to uh, Councillor's report. Councillor Cryer. Thank you, Mayor McEwen. I have a couple of things to mention. I don't know if, uh, I know Mayor and Council received the email regarding the Handy Dart, TransLink Handy Dart engagement that's coming up. And I'm going to ask Ms. Elric if we can fan a survey out to 
residents. What they're doing is embarking on a handy dart, handy dart modernization program. So they are just querying stakeholders and trying to improve the operation, making it more accessible and it just generally improving the level of service. Uh, I learned, I had a long conversation with, the, with them and I didn't realize how, um, like it's not as simple as I would have thought it would be. So what they're trying to do is make it a little sim simpler. You need to schedule your handy dart pickup uh, as much as two weeks in advance. It's not quick as if um, similar to uh, TransLink and taking the bus. So they're trying to coordinate things a little bit better. So it would be great if people in the community could fill out the survey and they will also be doing other types of engagement. And if anyone is, is interested in learning more, they can reach out directly to me and I can tell them a little bit more about what's going on and how, how they can get involved in, and get um, their voice heard on getting Handy Dart out here more often. Uh, second thing I'd like to report on is the Child Care Task Force, which I have been a part of since I joined council almost three years ago. And for the first time in my history of sitting on task forces, they have uh, completed their mandate. And it was uh, uh, an exciting time that they have completed what they were asked to do. The formal report will be coming out in the next couple of weeks, and that will be available if anyone again, would like to learn more about that, they can reach out directly to me. Uh, far too much to go into right now, but uh, we will also make that report available through council minutes in the future once they're finalized. And lastly, as Mayor McEwen suggested, uh, Easter is just around the corner and I did have a very fulsome conversation with the Easter Bunny today, trying to sort through the new provincial health orders and keeping the Easter Bunny safe as well as all of our community members and we have received a lovely response to the coloring contest and you still have time to get your coloring sheets in. You can find those at the, the village website and we'll be doing uh, the random draw tomorrow morning and in, in lieu of the Easter Bunny making the delivery, we will be doing social distancing drop-offs on the winner's doorsteps at a time that will be arranged with the winners. Um, we wish that we could have the Easter Bunny come out and deliver as usual, but it's just not safe. Uh, it's not safe for the Easter Bunny and we know that it would be difficult for the children in our community not to want to come out and visit. It might stir up a little bit of excitement and we wouldn't want to endanger anyone. So uh, next year, things will be different. <laughs> We're hopeful, but thanks everyone for submitting your coloring coloring sheets. It's been a good response, and and we're we're pleased with that. I may have one of those parcels here. Do you want me to show you? Yes. Whoa, nice. It's substantial. It is substantial. There are four of them. We have four age categories. So please. Thank you. Gosh, the Easter Bunny. Dropped them off here just by chance. They better get delivered pretty soon or I know where I'm going to be heading. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'll Thank open you. up. Any other counselor? Uh, counselor Weber. Yeah, I just, I don't have much to say. I just want to uh, really encourage people to get involved in this RGS amendment, the Sandmore South uh, uh, OCP workshop. Um, you know, as, as Mayor McEwen has said in the past, this was identified as a special study area, which really meant it was open to interpretation about what could go there. Um, don't concentrate on what the developer, the owner proposed. Um, you know, that was one possible way. I mean, ask the, ask the owner, say, well, it's kind of an open slate. You can propose something and run it up the flagpole and see what the community says. But, you know, we have a pretty good idea what the community is going to say. So this is, this is turning it around. This is the community leading what could happen there. And, and it's going to be a long process. There's going to be a long consultation. And um, I, I really encourage people to read up on it. It's a lot to understand. Um, if you don't understand it, reach out to the village hall. They will explain it uh, and get involved. We need to hear um, your opinions on everything going forward. And this is going to be a bit of a process. Mm -hmm. And that's all I have to say. 
got uh, Councillor Trowbridge. Yeah, I just uh, just a quick comment on the RGS thing as well. Um, <laughs> the simplest framework. I want to see everybody get involved, but but they need to be cognizant of what we're asking, and all we're asking is uh, to do. Do you want to change the designation from rural to urban? Would you like to have the current restrictive designation, or would you like the ability to have Anwar's residents? drive and choose their own future to have the most flexibility possible. We're not really talking about what could go there or what the development, if there is any, looks like or so on. That's that's not really the question. That's premature. It's simply, do, do we want the designation to change to urban, which is the widest, most broadly open choices for our residents? And that may mean that uh, if the proponent doesn't come forward with anything, the thing might just sit there as it is for decades, who knows? But it puts the power in the hands of our people, our residents, and I have a personal bias uh, on that, and that is RGS is, uh, uh, is coming up for uh, renewal in 2022, and right now we can have a 50 plus one vote and um, and the power is in our hands, Zanmore, to to drive our future. If we pass that date, and that's what the urgency is all about in my mind, if we pass that date, it then is a different process where it is a supermajority two thirds, and our neighboring communities weigh in on what it is that we are trying to do. And I'm not eager. Um, and this is going to sound protectionist, I suppose, but I'm not eager to take that risk and allow um, uh, governments surrounding us like Port Moody and, and others uh, have a say in how we designate our land. I think it should be the purview of Anmore residents and only Anmore residents. Good. Thank you. Any other comments from Council? I'll now move it on. Is there any sort of a Ms. Awarka CAO report or nothing today? Uh, sure, just to um, remind people basically the same thing that uh, you have all already talked about, that the um, registration is now open for the Anmore South um, OCP amendment uh, discussion. So the Zoom workshops will be held on Wednesday, April 7th and Thursday, April 8th from 7 to 9. So registration uh, can take place by emailing to village.hall at anmore.com. And we're asking everybody to register for that by April 6th. And then we will be having an open house on Tuesday, April 13th, again, virtually. Um, and registration is also open for that through the village website. The discussion guide is on the website available for viewing now and the mail drop um, has been sent out today. So it will be coming into everybody's um, mailboxes should be arriving tomorrow. Um, secondly, there is also a mail drop that will be coming out through everybody uh, either at the end of this week or beginning of next week regarding water main flushing. So please look for that. And uh, that is everything for this evening for me. Good. Well, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for filling in. Um, I'll now move on to some information items. We have uh, some general correspondence from the Tri-City Food Security Action Plan, communication from the District of Sycamus regarding invasive Asian clams, and a communication from the District of Sycamus again regarding aquatic evasive species enforcement. I'll now move, open it up to public question period. Public is permitted to ask questions of council regarding any item pertaining to village business. A two minute time limit applies to speakers. If anybody had any questions they wanted to ask, if they could please raise their hand or come off of mute and identify themselves. Anybody I'll ask again, if you want to ask any questions, please raise your hand or come off of mute. see nobody. Is there any written uh, emails, Ms. Elric, that came in? No, Mary McCune. I have nothing this evening. Okay, then I will move to adjourn.
Moved, seconded. Any discussion? See none, all those in favor? Carried unanimously. Good night, everybody, and please stay safe and support local, local restaurants if you can. Thank you again. Thanks, everyone. Happy Easter.